Hey there friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Dominique. In today's video, I wanna talk a little bit about my experience with nervous system dysregulation and anxiety. In past videos, I've had conversation with you sharing my anxiety story and also just sharing a little bit more about the role our nervous system plays when we are someone who deals with anxiety. But first, I am in Tennessee and I'm enjoying just some lovely family time with my husband and his family. We decided to drive to Tennessee from Maine and we did it all in one day and it was a lot, but it was nice to get it all done and over with in that one day. And so we've just been enjoying some time sightseeing and walking around Knoxville and just really enjoying some time to ourselves. I, um, I was with my grandmother for a couple of weeks caring for her while my family was on vacation. So this is kind of my way of refreshing and renewing my own energy just by simply having a change of pace and a change of scenery. So it's been a lovely time and I've had a lot of time over the past few weeks just kind of examining a little more closely what my nervous system does when it is feeling overwhelmed and dysregulated because everyone's system is going to respond so incredibly different. And for me, it really leaves me in this place of feeling, I guess you could call it like compassion fatigue, where you give so much of your empathy and compassion. And for me, like I pride myself in being one of those empathetic individuals and very compassionate. However, there is a point of depletion that we will eventually hit. And I was reaching that point and I noticed within my system that I was starting to feel resentment. I was starting to get very irritable. And because I've spent time getting to know my nervous system, I know that when I am being irritable or feeling irritable and short-tempered, then that is certainly me going into a state of a sympathetic response. And that is something that will signal me to take action, to figure out, okay, what is it that I need right now? And so I wanted to just kind of have this video be a chat about how our nervous system state is greatly affected when we're individuals who are empathetic and compassionate and we're you know constantly giving to others so it's kind of you know for all of you caregivers out there first off i see you i feel you i 100 percent understand the joy that comes with it but I understand the emptiness that can follow sometimes. And sorry, I have Lola with me. She's been a terror around the house. Shh. No. We're going to see how this goes. But I understand the frustration that can come along with that finding that balance of wanting to give but also starting to feel resentment for having to give so much. And so when, when I look at anxiety and what I do when I'm talking to my clients about anxiety is that first off, anxiety is not a diagnosis, it is a symptom. Now I'm not gonna say 100% it's you know never a, an imbalance within the brain, but the majority of the time, anxiety is not due to a chemical imbalance or something being wrong with your brain. It is alarm that we are feeling within our nervous system. And specifically, it's unresolved trauma. So for me, when I start to become anxious or alarmed, and it's because I am starting to reach my depletion level of 
that compassion and giving, it's because it brings me back to a place in my childhood when I was a people pleaser. I cared more for other people's emotional well-being than my own. And my way of staying safe, uh, my way of protecting myself was to think of others first. If other people were happy, I would be happy. And so when I do find myself hitting a sympathetic state within my nervous system, I can recognize now that it's due to me ignoring my own needs where I'm starting to fall back into those people-pleasing tendencies. And the wonderful thing about getting to understand and learn about your nervous system is that just like how I am able to do this now, you can pick up on the signs before it gets to a point where everything just explodes and gets way bigger than it really needs to. So you start to learn your signs and your triggers and you gain an understanding and curiosity instead of a judgment because our nervous system, is, it's our biology. There's nothing wrong with you. You are not broken if you are feeling these uncomfortable emotions. It is simply your nervous system alerting you that it needs attention and then we are able to give ourselves that attention and it gives you the sense of empowerment. At least that's what it was able to bring to me. And this is what I love so much to share and teach my clients and why I go into great detail about the polyvagal theory, which is the science of connection and safety. So it's our social engagement. And this is because nervous systems feed off of each other for healthy relationships, for healthy individual nervous systems. The polyvagal theory really gives you such a wonderful guide into identifying the state of your own nervous system. And this is what I use in my own practice and how I was able to identify where I was neglecting my needs while I was caring for my grandmother. And I had to sit down and really take a look at where was I going to fit in some time for myself so that way I wasn't reaching that compassion fatigue so I could continue to give to her at a level that she deserves and that I desire to give at. And so that allowed me to really take control over my anxiety by simply sitting down and taking a look at my schedule for each day. How much time did I have in the morning before she got up? What could I take advantage of, you know, if, when she was napping or watching one of her favorite TV shows. And I'm sure so many of you out there understand this, those of you who are mothers taking care of children at home, and even for those of you who are caring for a parent or a grandparent or a disabled child, seeing where those pockets of availability are for you to tend to your own needs. It is not being selfish. It is not a negative thing to prioritize your mental well-being because ultimately that is what is going to continue to allow us as caregivers to give from a place of abundance. So this, this past week of having some time off and being in another state, I really have even taken that another step where I've been greatly prioritizing my sleep and I've been communicating to my husband these needs that I am needing because of the past couple of weeks I had. And because I communicate these concerns with him and I, I now understand what my nervous system needs to re-regulate, then it's so much easier for me to address these concerns that come up for me before they get out of control, which has been my MO in the past because 
I felt selfish for needing extra time to myself. I felt weak when I couldn't just buck up and keep going. And there is simply no shame or blame in needing that little bit of extra time. So that way you are continuing to give from a place of abundance. So those are kind of just my thoughts for the past week. Lola. But I would love to hear from you guys. Are you a caregiver? Are you caring for a parent, a grandparent, a child, and starting to you know, reach the point where you're feeling that compassion fatigue? And if so, leave me a comment down below. I would love to reply to you and give you any insight that I can possibly offer to you. Because again, I see you, I know what is is going on to a certain extent of course every one of us is very different but you're not alone in this and it is okay to ask for help and to need more time for yourself and if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel i would love for you to go ahead and do so and join this community and while you're down there go ahead and hit that like button and until next time sending you so much healing love